Regularly scheduled Sunderland Board of Selectmen meeting today is Monday, February 11th, 2019. And we're short one member tonight. Tom is away this evening. Should we sing happy birthday? We could. Nah. <laughs> it would not make for great TV. No, that's true. They probably wouldn't want to hear me sing. So, no. um, so tonight we only have one budget uh, review topic for this evening, and that is our first one. It's uh, Zach Smith, director of the South County EMS service. You might have seen that uh, brightly colored truck with the flashy lights zipping around town occasionally. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. So, um, <clears throat> got our budget review with you guys tonight, so why don't you uh, take it away? Great, thank you for having me. Uh, we did just get some updated numbers at the end of last week, so I think, <clears throat> did you get the most yeah, recent? It was right dated there. February 8th, I think. Um, Two eight. Yes, great. 2019. Great, great, yep. great. Um, and that is, those last numbers were a result of the employee benefits costs um, and the indirect costs, which I'll mention, but just getting those calculations back from the town of Deerfield since we have to wait for other players to give us those numbers. So, yeah, um, we'll start from um, the very top of the budget, and it's uh, salaries, wages, and employee benefits. So, salaries and wages, as we've discussed before, since uh, Town of Deerfield is a fiscal agent, all the employees of South County EMS are employees of the Town of Deerfield. So we fall under their bylaws and personnel committee bylaws and stuff like that. So we're anticipating, um, as they did last year, that Deerfield will do a step and COLA for all of the employees. Very good, Mr. Chair. Yes. So step is essentially longevity and service. Yes. And that's broken out across um, ten uh, years. They just re they did a classification compensation study and redid okay. their plan last year, the year okay. before, um, and brought everybody. I, last time it had been updated was over a decade okay. ago or something like that. So they brought everybody on board. And yes, so every year typically you'd go up a step Got um, to reflect your um, knowledge of your job, your yep. seniority, things like that. Thank you. Um, and so everybody will get their consummate step, uh, except for those that are maxed out. Um, <clears throat> there's only two of us in the department. We were um, previous Deerfield EMS employees. So we've actually been yeah, Deerfield yeah. employees since the early aughts. So you've already um, gone through yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so um, those employees only get a COLA, um, and it's 2%, I believe, is um, how this was calculated. So that's where the salaries and wages numbers come from. There's no out of the ordinary. Um, uh, benefits or um, <clears throat> any sort of funny stuff going on. The employee benefits as an enterprise fund, we are responsible for those and we pull those out to represent the real cost of that. And that's all county retirement and insurance right. that we don't have a say over. So you'll actually see uh, medical insurance costs went up 12%, county retirement expenses went up 10%. Um, and that's if I could mr. chair mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so on the um, medical insurance costs is that still with the uh, Hampshire trust that's a great question I don't know you're being assessed a 12% increase yeah 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 just just to be just to be fair ours was 0.75 Point six for point. medical and, and and it was a point six decrease for dental, so it's kind of a wall. <laughs> so yeah. to, to bear that in mind, yeah, we we moved a year ago, understanding <clears throat> there may be some yep. challenges with the Hampshire Trust. You're talking twelve percent, uh, and yes, we're talking increased. one percent. Um, Just yes. so Deerfield hears that. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Um, I will have to. I would ask. So, I mean, this is all through our HR in mm -hmm. town. I'll have to double check. I don't know if some of that is representative of employees changing plans. Or That's a good like point. Yep. Yep. So great point. Not sure about that. Um, but those are the numbers supplied mm -hmm. to me from HR. Um, and then uh, getting into operating expenses. Uh, yeah, the, I guess the, the things that stand out um, are the rent. So rent is decreased. Um, we were paying over the three towns just over $50,000. Uh, the lease agreement that was agreed upon at the Board of Oversight has to be voted or ratified by the member towns uh, is for $36,000 a year paid to the town of Deerfield for the use of the building. Uh, 
The difference there, though, you'll notice under office expense, mm -hmm. we've jumped from three to thirteen thousand. That's because we're so we're, we are now responsible for utilities okay. where we weren't before. It was okay. inclusive of our rents before. Yep. Now yeah, it's not. So, so um, some of that is um, real and calculable costs. We know what it's going to be. A li some of it too, like um, uh, just utilities. That five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That's an estimate based on the last six months of occupancy or so question mr chair yeah so zach in in the the discussion about setting aside some of these rent values for a uh, call it a trust fund yes to, to deal with future capital projects yeah. which frankly i kind of endorse conceptually yes i think it makes a great deal of sense not paying rent rent to an entity as the building was donated correct so you're going to pay operating costs and then the rent goes to something for a future whatever the understanding yes and everybody's in agreement about upon this at the board of oversight is that the money mm -hmm. paid for rent will go into yep. exactly that trust a stabilization whatever it be for the facility mm -hmm. so when it needs a new roof when it needs new asphalt when it needs a new furnace things like that right. the money will be there i mean we're already you know town buildings are running into that now right where we right. just don't have any money set aside for those types of improvements so, that was, that was so exactly that, where I was going, yeah, so thank exactly you. Right. So that it. money doesn't go directly to the town of Deerfield well, General Fund. So, here, so there's the, therein lies the rub. Yes. Well, we'll get there. <laughs> therein lies the rub. Um, I guess legally, and this, this mm -hmm. came back from DOR or somebody, <clears throat> that money has to go into the general fund and then be voted, appropriated, or whatever, mm -hmm. into the specific account for the building from right. there. Um, <clears throat> this is... It's, so, a, it's still a work in progress. Yes. I think that's important. Deerfield's yeah. got to adopt some fund to put that in so it stays with the building. Bruce, your question is spot on. Yeah. Yep. And I think some people found out about the general fund thing mm -hmm. before some other people did, yep. and there was some concern that maybe there was some shiftiness going on. It's just we're all feeling it out. We're yeah. trying to get our sea legs right. and right. figure out. Does Deerfield and Whateley pay the same amount? Uh, well, it's that that rent money is assessed based on the same percentage breakdown. Right. But Deerfield pays into that fund, and Waitley pays into that fund. Yes, it's under based pays. on the percentage of Correct. whatever. Yep. Right. Yeah, so Bruce, as you know, moving it to the general fund makes it a general a, available funds for general appropriation. The concern in the dialogue, and I think the dialogue was 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 uh, sound by. Um, Selectman Kimosa was like, well, we have to find a mechanism to set a percentage of that aside or all of that aside to offset future capital problems with the building. That that final step in that mechanism hasn't quite been called out yet. So you get about seventy-five thousand dollars going into that fund, correct? Every year, uh, by no, all no, three no, towns, no, no, thirty-six thousand. By all three whole. towns, yeah. No, but thirty-six thousand is the line item for that, but that right. is divided up. By the three towns, because so um, that's like their their okay. rent cost. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, okay. It's an accounting thing. Trying to. I know. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Because they say Skem's rent is this, and then behind the scenes. Okay. Right. Okay. I. You get I, that I get break it now. Up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and then uh, the other one, uh, the big point of contention is the town of Deerfield. Uh, either it's listed as clerical expenses, I believe, on the budget I gave you. It's the indirect costs. Um, this is the <coughs> line item that was agreed upon <coughs> early on, considering that Deerfield is the fiscal agent, that the HR responsibilities, yep. the accounting responsibilities, all those Great things. Yep. That is based on a calculation of 10% of the operating. De the departments that share a role. So they take the, oh. like the accountant's right. budget and personnel and all that, and then 10% of that they, okay. they consider us to be sure. taking. Now, we have been discussing this as of late. This has been a regular topic at our BOO meetings. It will it's on the agenda again um, for this month's BOO meeting on the 26th. And that is, is 10% representative of really the amount of time sure. that SCEMS is taking on. And I think when that 10% was 
drafted back in 2014, 2015, it was realistic. Just with all the hiring we were doing, the management it's of the CIC, <clears throat> grants, things like that. Yep. Um, now looking at it, it's like, okay, yeah, um, I think, what is it, what are we up to? 73,253? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, everybody's like, that is a lot of money. And what is, what is the actual time expense right. and, and financial expense that these departments are? Uh, taking so that is being discussed. There is a similar assessment calculation done for the wastewater treatment plants and the South County Senior Center in Deerfield. They also pay indirect costs, and they they have a similar but different uh, formula that they use. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the discussion: is would that be more appropriate for us? Um, and if I could, Mr. Chair, to be to be fair to the, the town of Deerfield, some kind of assessment for administrative components had to be developed at the formation. Yes. But as the agency is up and running, a reassessment of does it actually make sense for services rendered? You are invoiced for services rendered. You invoice for services yeah. rendered, so it's not it's not a new arena. Right. The question is, you know, does it fit what we're actually being invoiced right. for? Right. And I'm sure the town of Deerfield and the administrators and elected officials there will, will work toward you know, a good end. Yeah, I, I can't speak for everybody, but the consensus to me seems that 10% is high for right. what we are currently doing, right. but. This is the formula we currently have, Bingo. hence why it is budgeted that way in this budget. Um, so that is that. So if I could, Mr. Chair, yep. do you actually do collection your, uh, yourself or is that through agency or is that through the town? No, we have an agreement with a medical billing Good. agency okay. specifically. There are two major <clears throat> players out there mm -hmm. um, and we have, just in my tenure with the town of Deerfield, um, three times, I believe, at least two, I think three, we've gone out to bid to look at what the, our options are. We currently use Comstar Ambulance Billing. They're based in Massachusetts. Um, we've been very, very happy with them. Our collection rates are outstanding. Good. Um, so there is no concern there whatsoever. Um, the last RFP we did, their um, percentage that they assess us is exactly the same as everybody right. else and the benefits we get from them are above and beyond what the others can offer. So um, it has come up just uh, Deerfield just recently wrote off a lot of mm -hmm. uh, money for previous uh, Deerfield EMS runs yep. mm -hmm. and that's just the nature of the business we're in by providing care 100 percent to anybody who asks for it at any time and then billing after the fact. Right. We will naturally just run into situations where 100% of our bills aren't ever paid, and, and that's and we budget anticipating sure. that. So, sure. that makes um, sense. Thank it's you. it's not money lost; it's just the way that we do business. So, in the billing line item, that basically covers that service. Yeah. So, the estimated revenue from services that that billing line, you'll actually see that mm -hmm. my estimations are up from last year. Mm -hmm. That is the actual amount that we expect to receive, and that's based on that. Um, low to mid 90% collection rate that we have for insured patients. So um, everything we're doing is assuring fast and, and accurate billing and that is a, um, a conservative estimate. It's, mm -hmm. it's tough to say um, exactly what's going to happen in the insurance marketplace. Um, but I did think it was reasonable and fair to increase that estimation based on our last three or four years of data and just right, and project on. based on that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we also now in the, this is the second year that we have an operational reserve line item of $100,000. So now that we have that as well, um, if it allows me to estimate a little bit closer to what I anticipate our revenues will be because if we do fall short there we now have that buffer and the operational reserves that we could call on and not okay. come short mm. and uh, all that said and done um, uh, you know operation expenses uh, very nearly the same we do have the increase in personnel and benefits um, but that coupled with the increase in estimated revenue we're looking at a 0.16% increase um, in the assessment. So you'll see that when we take our total operating budget and, oh, and we're also increasing the amount of retained earnings that we're applying over last year. So um, let me make sure I, I say this correctly. Um, so our total operating expenses, and this includes that operational reserve line <coughs> item that we expect will roll over. 
uh, is uh, $1.3 million in change. Um, we, from that, we subtract the $525,000 that we expect to receive from revenue mm -hmm. and the $231,000 that we're applying from the retained earnings mm -hmm. um, left over. Basically, that represents um, revenue above what we expected from previous years um, and that operation reserve that we didn't dip into. We're left with $632,859. And that is the total amount that we are assessing to the three towns. Mm -hmm. Now, of that, Sunderland's portion is 31.48%. And I've done the math for you. Um, so it comes to a total of $199,203. The joys of Excel. Yes, right? Um, <laughs> So unfortunately, it is an increase of $310 from last year. For that, I apologize. <laughs> um, but with that, right, I, I don't think I need to remind everybody, but I will anyway. Uh, yeah. That's 24-7 paramedic service uh, to Sunderland. You're seeing that paramedic ambulance within five, seven minutes. Um, and especially considering now the tumultuous situation just north of us. Montague, not sure where they're going to get their ambulances from, their paramedics well, that was from one of my questions was what, what kind of effects are you seeing from serving other areas other than yeah. you know, our so, coverage area? Uh, we, our policies are that we will only respond <clears throat> um, and back up other communities under certain situations, and that is to protect our three towns and make sure that coverage remains here. Right. Um, after the handover, MedCare Ambulance in Greenfield was sold to AMR um, out of their Springfield division. They took over on I think it was like December 15th or 16th. In the following week, we saw a 250% increase in the amount of times that we were called to back up Greenfield. And uh, we've been working very, very close with our partners to the north trying to figure out kind of a holistic solution for the county. Uh, South County, we are making our calls. We don't leave our communities if it would leave us with no coverage. Um, so the citizens of these three towns can rest assured that we are here for them and we are solvent. We're not going anywhere. Um, but uh, we are working with them to try to figure out a good solution for that. Um, so, but 24-7 paramedics down here. We're also doing community outreach. Um, I don't have anything to announce yet, but I've been working very closely with organizations in Hampshire County, the jails, Greenfield, we had a major um, meeting recently hoping to expand community EMS services for people suffering from substance use disorders. Nice. Um, just recently, people who were just recently released from the jails, maybe on drug charges or not even, and getting them back into the community and doing follow-ups with them. So we're hoping to partner with that. That'll all be included um, within this expense. Right now, these are services that we can bring on board within the capacity that we have um, in between calls and things like yeah. that. So. It's exciting times, um, and I'm glad that we have South County EMS down here and we don't have to deal with the, the concerns that our neighbors in the north are feeling right now. Yeah. So. I just want to start and thank you again for, you know, this is an amazing service and you yeah. do excellent work. And I, I, I just wanted to you know, do a yeah. little bit of nitpicking. Please, please. You know, please. that's got yeah, 300 bucks that we can <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> scout Get him, Elliot. Get him. Get him. Yeah. Well, <laughs> did you recently switch uh, cable providers? Uh, that is that is representative of just moving into our own facility, and that covers uh, our basically our internet. That is that is the majority of that our expense there. All of our uh, medical records are handled offsite in the cloud on a secured patient data information safe HIPAA compliant server. So everything we do. We enter it on, com on a computer, it immediately gets uploaded and then gets wiped clean locally. And so there's just a lot of bandwidth going back and forth all the time for that. So that's basically internet and television um, is what that expense is. Uh, and that's also mission critical, so we have like backup internet and things right. like that. So, But the move, the move did have it jump? Yes, yeah. So all that, but so the, the, the previous amounts were... Um, we're basically rolled over and then with this new facility where we're 100% uh, percent responsible for everything, um, you also see something similar in telephone. So mm -hmm. it's the same thing. We're 100% percent responsible for that now. So. Yeah, we, we would have seen that buried in our costs down in the public safety for the for the backup ambulance. Yeah. It simply would have been un, un, likely under the fire department budget. Yeah. Yep. 
which reminds us, Elliot, when the fire department comes back, we can ask about a decrease in their no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can we put you back on dialogue? Exactly. <laughs> uh, um, are you are you guys going to be affected by any of the changes in radio systems? Or yes. Okay. Yes, uh, significantly. Right. Yeah. Uh, we are the South County EMS. Uh, what he's talking about is the radio system, the public safety radio system in Franklin County is uh, being held together by shoestrings. And it's going to take one lightning strike and we're going to lose the ability to communicate countywide. So we're looking right now on our options to maintain a public safety radio system. And the Franklin Regional Council of Governments owns and operates and maintains this system. And they do so through assessing all the agencies that use the system of fee based on units and it's percentage or um, population covered right. and South County EMS serving three towns um, nearly 15 or 16,000 people in total were assessed six units which is we're right up there with you know a city of Greenfield <laughs> so um, uh, our our annual right now it's in here an exact like uh, six seven hundred dollars yep. um, if we build our own system, we anticipate that that value will go up tenfold. Right. Um, but I didn't. There's a room of over a hundred people, and I don't think anybody thought that they could afford that. Right. Right. Um, exactly. So, uh, I think we will probably end up going with a solution that will cost significantly less, if not nothing. Um, but so, is the Cog working on that 800 megahertz digital, etc. Super Wiz Bang Gold Medal? <laughs> Sorry. If you want to hear my yeah. a second, <laughs> that's yeah. it. There is so we have a public safety system that's built out through the entire county. Right. Um, there is currently the state police, mm -hmm. Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency, uh, environmental police. Their system is state of the art, and it overlaps is currently built out in our county. Right. Um, it exists right now, and the state has said that they want us to use their system. Mm -hmm. They've said that because they want interoperability, it's part of their mission, they want us on their system, and they even put their money where their mouth was because the FERCOG asked for a grant to engineer a replacement system, and the state said, we're not going to give you money for that because we have one. it wouldn't be reasonable for us to spend taxpayers' money when we're going to put you on our system that currently exists. Got it. Um, there are communities in Central Mass that are on their system right now. Barnstable County on the Cape has been on their system for over a decade. Mm -hmm. um, so there's precedent here. They want us on the system. It currently exists. Got and it. my understanding is even if they wanted to, there is no legal mechanism for them to charge us to use it. Seems easy, doesn't yeah. it? It seems like a no-brainer, <laughs> yeah, right? right. Um, but where's the wrinkle? <laughs> well, the wrinkle is that um, they have yet to say you can join it tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because they're like, well, when are you going to join? And we're like, well, when are you going to let us? And they're like, well, when are you going to join? So they don't want to commit resources to bringing us on board sure. until they have a better idea what we're looking at. Yeah. And so they're not going to put anything in writing. Um, that, that said, though, there is equipment cost to join. Right. There is equipment cost equipment. because we will need to replace radios. Right. Right. Um, right. We need to replace radios anyway. A lot of the radios in the county were bought on the grant. 15 years ago, seven, and, and they are beyond their life expectancy. This newer system has better technology. It's crystal clear. It's better than a cell phone. Um, and so you need to buy new radios for it. It's on a different frequency. But to that I say, if it's going to cost me $60,000 a year to build a duplicate system out, well, right. that $60,000 a year will buy you know, sixfold the amount of radios that I need, more than that, 12-fold the amount of radios that I need. So, um, and I think it would be safe to assume that there will probably will be grant money floating around for us to at least get initially started on this new system. Great. Um, to me, it's a no-brainer. That's my professional opinion. Mm -hmm. um, but some other people want some more answers. I think, I think the writing's on the wall, and I look forward to that okay. system. <laughs> I appreciate that. There's yeah. a good. A good, <clears throat> good question yeah, because I've been thinking it's about coming that. along that way yeah um, if you would like me to bang a drum and and share my opinion on that I'll be happy to sure in any venue good. you have because will... I feel rather strongly about that good <laughs> so if I could Mr. Chair I yes. see capital costs oh. are under separate budget separate budget capital costs so there is a separate capital cost budget um, this is 
Uh, there's two items that I've submitted. The Board of Oversight has yet to vote one way or the other whether they think these expenses make sense. So I had to submit them in time just to get them on a budget. Um, they are twofold. One is... Yeah, I don't see it yet either. But do you have it? I have copies if you'd like it. The, what you need to know is that there would be no assessment to the member towns. Um, there would be no cost. It would be okay. out of, do you want copies? You just want, like, maybe one for that yeah, table, one for this table. That's fine. Um, here, I think I made four, just in case. So how about three over there and one over there? Yeah, that's fine. Right. Would you kind of like Oh, Thank thanks so much. Special, huh? Well, and you know, we talk about prudent moves about putting money away for future mm -hmm. eventualities. One of them is ambulance replacements. Sure. Um, cool. Currently, uh, we're on, we have three ambulances on a five-year ambulance replacement, so our oldest ambulance should never be more than 15 years old. Got it. Um, that's the idea. Um, mm -hmm. And with the changes in safety and things like that, and also just maintenance and, and fees like that, um, we like to keep our frontline ambulance less than five years old. Uh, we have some significant expenses that we're uh, encumbering with one of our trucks in particular. Uh, it's costing over a dollar a mile just to operate, and that doesn't even include fuel mm. on it. We would normally be due, well, we normally put away about $50,000 uh, somewhere in the like fifty to fifty-five thousand dollars a year for replacement ambulance. Mm -hmm. So every five years we have enough for an ambulance, and we've been submitting that, taking that money out of retained earnings. So that's basically money uh, that we got from billing that we're going to put back into our capital. Um, we would be due in fiscal year twenty-one, and the difference between. Fiscal year 20 and 21 for replacing the ambulance is only $17,000. So I've made a capital request that for fiscal year 20, we replace our outdated ambulance now instead of having to wait another year. The build time for the year is like 260 or 270 days long. So yeah. if we waited until fiscal year 21, 2021, we wouldn't see it until 2022. Got it. Got and it. this truck it's costing me three thousand dollars a month just trying to like tow it and keep it in operation so um that was my first it's not the best visual to have your ambulance no. tow. Tow. Yeah, exactly. it's not no. it's not and uh every every once in a while every once in a while i'll get somebody sending me a picture of an ambulance yeah, right. getting towed from the diesel pumps before right. the crew has right. a chance right. to like call me and that's always yeah, yeah. Right. um and again that's being paid for out of retained earnings so there's no there's no so, assessment yeah. um yeah. So, so this 243 is basically the cost of a new ambulance. Yeah, so we anticipate the new ambulance is going to cost $250,000. We have a lot of equipment that will move over um, yep. to our existing ambulances. We spent a lot of that money for the power load systems, the NARC safes. Those things that we did some capital requests for previous years will be moved over to the new ambulance. So um, our the last truck we bought was 285000 but that's because there was all the additional equipment in it. So you had so, to build it out. Yes. Right. Yeah. And now we can just transfer that stuff up. So 250 is what we expect that ambulance to cost. Um, then the other capital request I made was for um, an additional vehicle. And the idea here is that with our expanded community EMS programs, doing house checks, uh, meeting up with people after discharge, stuff like that. Um, and our trainings, things like that. There's a lot of things that we currently use ambulances for that put additional wear and tear on that ambulance. When our crews go to pick up medications in the morning, they climb into that $250,000 ambulance and they drive it all the way up to the hospital to pick up some drugs and drive it back. Um, so the idea is with um, the other capital requests, and I've requested $40,000 just for some sort of vehicle um yeah i was like going to say like a i don't know like a little mini like a ford transit yeah or like something. or like an suv or something runs. like that yep. um the other things that we'd use it hmm. for um okay. you know when we pick up equipment that's been left down at bay state springfield we transport our trauma patients there our stroke patients there things like that you gotta go pick uh, your things up yeah, yeah. if yeah, i need yeah, gear or equipment um our options are we take an ambulance all the way down to Springfield um, with one person in it, um, or we take a personal vehicle and then we submit for mileage on that. Um, the other thing too would be responding to um, calls to neighboring communities, say 
Conway has a cardiac arrest and they're requesting additional resources. We have our Lucas machine, which is an automatic compression machine. Mm -hmm. If we have a small rapid response vehicle, a crew member can take that vehicle and take that piece of equipment and help out that individual in a neighboring community and leave our ambulance in the South County region available for a call. We're not putting... We're um, taking it out of, right. out of the... Right. And then the other flip mm -hmm. of that is... The other option, sometimes on the fly, if something like that happens, like I'll throw that equipment in my personal vehicle. And then the option there is, okay, I'm not taking an ambulance out of town, but now I'm responding to an emergency in a personal vehicle or another department member is using their personal vehicle hmm. to go to another station and pick up equipment. And there's a cost and liability absolutely yep. associated with those people right. responding. Um, so, hmm. um, huh. and you, I don't know. And just to wrap it all up right now, um, the Deerfield Highway Department's very generous. They come by and they pick our garbage up. Yep. Um, and they're not garbage men. You know, they are public works employees. And they do that because they have access to vehicles that can haul garbage. Right. Um, and we don't. I'm not going to throw garbage in the back of an ambulance and so, bring it up to the so transfer who, station. Who, who, who picks up the town office building's garbage? Uh, they have Mohawk cleaning or something. I don't know. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Interesting. But, well, thank you, Highway Guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's, there's all these things that we currently do as a fully-fledged 24-7 public safety agency that driving an ambulance to it, especially if we're gonna be doing follow-ups with substance use disorders and things like that. Parking an ambulance in somebody's driveway is very conspicuous. Um, and so when we're trying to... Probably not the most suited vehicle yeah. for that. Um, the $40,000 uh, was just an estimation based on a bare bones state bid list. I've reached out to our other public safety departments, the police departments in particular, to see about leftover vehicles when they're replacing ones. Um, the most recent one that was replaced was the town of Deerfield. They had a police cruiser, and the police chief said, you do not want the car at all. You're gonna, like, it's going to leave you stranded. It's going to leave you on the side of the road. And he, in good faith, couldn't hand it over. And none of the other departments have any hand-me-downs now. Um, so that 40000 would either be for something new with a warranty, fresh off the lot, or a used vehicle that is in inventory at a public safety municipal dealer that's yeah. just been traded in or something like that. Not the lease, sir. I have no yeah. idea. Uh, this was okay. that was a number I threw on the wall, and that might have sticks, a great so. dump truck for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'm telling you. I said um, some other Deal. people. I said, Take you know, like I, I've seen some gears moving right. in people's right. heads, and I'm like, as long as it's appropriate for what we need, yeah, exactly. and I have an idea of what that is, but I'm not picky. I'm not, right. I don't care where it comes from. I don't care what color it is. Um, but uh, that's that's the other capital request, and that is would also be paid for out of retained earnings. So um, no assessment to the towns on that as well. It's sort of like your version of free cash for anybody who's wondering. What, sort of, sort yeah. Of, yeah. Point. yeah. Yeah. Not uh, quite like it, but just for folks wondering. What a similar, yeah, the because the, we have such a significant revenue stream. So the, the free cash analogy, we're an enterprise fund, which means we're responsible for everything because they want to show the true cost because they're assessing all three towns. It wouldn't be fair to bury the benefits expenses right. somewhere in the town of Deerfield right. Right. budget if we're going to. Um, so, but as a result of that, the money that we take in mm -hmm. through billing and collections goes back into our enterprise fund. Right. Um, and there's some funny rules with that. There was a steep learning curve about mm -hmm. how and where and you who, can and cannot who do. decides and who doesn't have to decide and things like that. But um, that's what that is, yeah. Okay. It would be interesting, if I could, Mr. Chair, yeah. for the, the SCEMS and the BOO to come up with uh, formulaic approach to available revenues because th as we all know they, they don't simply continue on a, on a, on a rise right. there, there could be the first year where it's like oh mm -hmm. we have to change the assessments to the towns because we didn't do as many runs or we had difficulty with collections or we had a capital piece so I would encourage the boo as well as SCMS to come up with some kind of formulaic approach to what's available and how it's used yeah. at the end of the budget cycle. Yeah. And that, that removes a lot of hairstyles and attitudes. Sure. And it's like, oh, well, 30% goes to capital, 30% goes to blah, 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 yeah. whatever it is. Because there'll be that year where the questions will come 
and people will you have to defend, well, we've underwritten this by a quarter of a million dollars for the last five years. Right. This year we can't. Well, right. wait a minute. What happens next year? So I think there's real value in exploring that. And there's models for it. Okay. Great. What's the percentage of your runs increasing over the last couple of years? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, great question. Uh, regularly, a ten percent a year, and I think even, I think this last year was thirteen percent. Hmm. We see an increase in runs every year. Um, a certain percentage of that are transports. Some of them are no transports. Things like that. Um, but that ratio stays about the same. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, you can count on a ten percent increase of calls. Every and day. and that's because of just generally more people need the service. More people are aware of the service. Yeah, I, I think my gut. Um, is it's twofold. One of them is populations aging and people aren't getting healthier, they're just getting older. And um, thanks a lot. And well, <laughs> not you, Bruce. more available <laughs> customers. Um, like and you know, and that's yeah, yeah. that's a trend that we're seeing everywhere, not right. just locally. I mean, nationally, you know, <clears throat> um, health, health services utilization is up, EMS requests are up just nationally. And I think the other thing, too, is the if you build it, they will come. And I think that we have a great reputation, well-deserved if I may add, and people know that, you know what, like before I would have driven myself to the hospital or, you know, I, I'm just not even gonna call on it because I don't wanna wait around. I just And now it's like, you know what, there are professionals, they can be here, they can give me a peace of mind, they can take me to the hospital and I don't have to worry about those other concerns they had in the past. So they're quicker to call 911, which they should be. I mean, they should feel like we are a resource for them. Um, I think <clears throat> those two things are where we're seeing the increase. I, but I think, I think it's primarily the former. I think it's just national increase. If I could, Mr. Chair. Yep. So a uh, three-part question. Uh, backup aid to other agencies. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that as an increase as well? We did initially mm -hmm. after AMR's yep. response. That um, being within the last quarter, or I'm talking across the, the trajectory of SCEMS? You guys have been at this now going near five yeah, years. Um, I, it's ebbed and flowed, yep. um, primarily just with the, help of our, with the health of our neighboring right, agencies. Right. Um, we saw a sharp spike in December and a sharp drop off. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there was a week and a half there where we were really strung out. It's not like that any yep. longer. Good. And um, I've clarified our policy with our neighboring, our sister agencies. They <clears throat> appreciate it. They're on the same boats. Yep. And that's why we're all trying to work together as a county. Yep. Just like that. We're South County service, you know, we're not staffed, we're not funded to also be Greenfield's mm -hmm. EMS service. So if they need an EMS service, how do we kind of work sure. and, and figure out? Um, and that's either, you know, them expanding themselves. There's been discussions about those communities contracting with other services that neighbor them. Um, but that's all, you know, infantile stuff right now, but just trying to figure out, you know, what that looks like. Yep. Uh, second piece was when SCEMS originally was adopted, it was a bit eye-opening to see how many, uh, because it wasn't paramedic level service, how many transfers there actually were, right? You do in-route transfers to paramedic level service from, yeah, the, we the, old, them, from the old system. Yes, intercepts. intercepts. So we would Sorry. have to have paramedics meet us in route, right. yeah. And so intercepts, I assume, have dwindled to the point of zero. Uh, yes, uh, we will occasionally, if we have multiple simultaneous calls, we always have sense. at least one right. paramedic yeah, right. truck on duty. That is our minimum staffing. Yeah. Right, so that second, that third call, mm -hmm. we right. might respond with a basic level truck and then require an intercept once, twice a year. Right. You know? um, and then if we need additional help, if we have a very critical patient, we will call for additional yep. paramedics to help with that. That's actually a regulatory requirement. Sure. Um, and depending on what that looks like, we might and current intercept fee for that, sure. but it's that is also sure. very rare. And I, I raise the point, uh, uh, Zach, because you, you made it a point earlier to talk about the level of 24-7 being paramedic level service. A lot of people simply, if they didn't participate in the system, understand that that original three-town system of pseudo-volunteers and trained professionals yeah. oftentimes had a, an intercept rate of, that was a pretty high percentages. 
Yes. So that went away as well. So yes. that was a shameless yeah, yeah. plug. It was uh, backing my way into it, but that yeah. was a shameless plug. <laughs> Thank you. I even looking back on the there's a line item for intercept fees. In twenty fifteen we budgeted fifteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars for intercept fees. Um, and I've uh, for twenty twenty I expect maybe twelve hundred dollars we'll spend on Got it. it. That's uh, important to bear yeah. in mind as well. And again, it's kind of backing into yeah. that shameless plug. Lastly, Conway. What about it? How many times do we go to Conway? <laughs> um D- did it, it was interesting because, because no, I haven't actually. I'm not a Facebook I, guy, but I talked to the other selectmen, and they were like, "What? No, you don't." It's like, yeah. uh, actually, yeah, we, we probably really do. I believe on the on Facebook, I, you can go to our website, SoChems.org, or visit us on Facebook, mm-hmm. Facebook.com/slash <laughs> South County EMS or South County or whatever. Um, like us, don't forget to review us on Yelp. Uh, the, <laughs> um, yeah, that kind of ebbs and flows. Right. Conway is a volunteer right. EMS service. service. Yes. Right. And when somebody calls 911 and they need an ambulance in Conway, it is whether their EMTs, sure. at least two of them, are in town and able to leave, stop what they are doing. Get there. Get the ambulance and go get them. Right. Um, so th- that comes and goes. Right. There are, they don't have a lot of calls a year. I think yeah. it's like 100 something, mm-hmm. 120. Um, so there are weeks where they make every call, no problem. Right. There are other weeks where nobody's in town, or right. they're watching the kids, right. you know, that type of thing. Um, so, I, like we used to be. Yes, I, sure. I, I, but it, it's not so much that it's it's hindering our ability to respond. That is well within our um, our capacity to absorb mm-hmm. those rare calls when they Correct. do come in. It was more for the edification of some other individuals who don't really. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I, I raised I raised the point. Yeah primarily out of uh, awareness to the totality of the services that are provided and the area that's covered. Mm -hmm. We talk about being back up with respect to mutual aid. We talk about going to other areas. It was an interesting conversation with uh, a member of of the Conway Town Government. They're like, no, you don't. Like, no, actually, you pretty much do. It's pretty easy math. So anyway, and to, to the extent the service they have provided, and continue to provide uh, fits a community. Bless them. Oh yeah, I, right. It's it's nothing. And it, we would, if we were to equip our emergency services to the extent that we could cover 100% of our calls internally, right. we would be fools to do that. Correct. So part of how public safety works is that we understand there will be, you know, lean and fat times where we have to call in other communities to help us. Uh, and then we help them. So it, it's one of those things that we into, we appreciate comes out in the wash usually right. in the end. It's right. it's when it becomes grossly imbalanced, right. like it's happening to the north, that we have to start addressing sure. it. But we go to Amherst when they have a structure fire, things yep. like that. So um, there's, yeah. That's a good point. Thanks so much. I saw you in Hatfield one day. Yep. I think uh, we, we went to Bernardston not too long ago. We've been to Charlemont. I think you're going to yeah. CNS. That's what I think it was. Yeah. I think you were driving in. Yeah, there. absolutely. And it's just sometimes, you know, everybody calls 911 at once. Right. <laughs> right. We're just, it it, it works both ways, ways, though. It works both ways. Yeah. You know, if you need someone, they're going to come to, a, to, to our area and stuff. So it right. works both I, ways. A hundred percent. Absolutely. I mean, it would take, it takes one car accident with four patients right. for us to need help, right. you know, or even three yep. patients, depending. Yep. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not uncommon in that. In that sense, and you raise a good point, Bruce. It's been a shared service for a long time. Good for years, it's been like, mm-hmm. and it's, it's it continues to evolve and it continues to improve. And I think that's what we're hearing every time these budget uh, reviews come up. It's like, oh, oh my God, not just volume, but quality of the care and the way it's run. Yeah, when you hear the five to seven minute response time, yep. I can remember when I was working, I listened to the scanner. 20, and, and it'd be 20, 30, oh, yeah. 40 well, minutes. And it wasn't it just, it was cool. all over. It was all over yeah. the county. Right. And, and you know, when you're gasping for breath, that that's makes, a long time. Yep. That can make the big yeah. the difference. Uh, it makes the difference, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's good Great service. Yeah. And this is one of those things that, um, you know, you never really want to have to take advantage of the service. But if, it, if you do, mm-hmm. you want to know that it's there and, you know, and it's available. So it's greatly appreciated. 
so a couple points leaving if mm. I could whether yeah. it's or just the boo or this our board that sends a correspondence to the boo or Tom brings to the boo some formulaic method for dealing with how reserves are calculated and then for the for the town of Deerfield with respect to the creation of trust specific to buildings so we don't get lost in the ether of general yeah. funds Right. Yep. And I, I say ether, knowing that we have ether yeah. here as well. Yeah. Well, and, and you are not alone in exactly. that, that concern. Right. Let's see. I think. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Any other questions? No, yes. we wonder what the boo was. What the, the board, board, of, oh, board, board of oversight. Board of oversight. <laughs> the board of yes. oversight. Yes. 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 Board of it's oversight. It's a boo. Yes. There's, yeah. a, there's a, a South County uh, Senior Center boo also. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. It is a committee of people who only commit oversights, I exactly guess, is right. why it's named that way. I don't know. <laughs> I no, like that's that, not actually. True. Um, <laughs> I never volunteered for that one, but I like it. Um, <laughs> known as the double boo. Exactly right. You know. Brilliant. Or double boo. Well, thanks again so much, Zach. Uh, yeah. Again, highlights, you know, we're, we're effectively flat. And you're still using some resources uh, to offset the costs to t assess towns. Yeah, yeah, and it, and that's that's one of those balance where you know when people see that we have retained earnings, sometimes their knee jerk is to say, well, then you're budgeted, you know, too high. Yeah. Um, but really, what it is is that represents that wiggle room because we rely sure. half on revenue from health insurance, yeah. and so we always kind of underestimate that a little bit. Um, so we have that room, Smart. which means we will always have a little bit of retained right. earnings, which means our intention is to always put it back into the sure. assessment and keep things level. Great. Actually, so. part of sound financial management to have right. that in there. Good point, David. What's, what's your percentage of uncollected bills out of the total? Uh, it depends. You break it down be between people who are insured um, and then people on Medicaid, Medicare, and then the uninsured. For people who are insured, we collect 90, I think 3% or 95 of what we expect to receive. And so that's basically everything. Everything we bill out to the private insurance, we get 93 to 95% back. That remaining 5 or 7% is co-pays, is what that really is. Yep. Um, and then for people on Medicaid, Medicare, um, that is, there's maximum allowable. So we actually have to sign a contract with Medicare in order for them to, and then so they say, we know this run costs you $1,400 to do in real expenses, but we're only going to pay you 600 And so we calculate based on what we expect to receive. So hmm. of that percentage, so basically the 600 of the 1400 we spent, I, I forget off the top of my head, but it's, I think it's, I don't want to quote it wrong, but it's like 70s or 80%. It might be 70% on that. Mm -hmm. um, and so the difference there is co-pays. Right. Sometimes Medicare, Medicaid just says, no, like we're not gonna pay it, there's nothing you can do about it, and there's no explanation why. Um, so that, that is a very good collection rate for those. And then the last is uh, people that are labeled as uninsured. Really it's people with no insurance, um, and that could mean visitors to a candle factory or people driving from out of state who get into a car accident who don't have motor vehicle insurance or don't have um, you know their insurance of their own or things like that or okay. give us or they move and we can't get a hold of them those types of things and we've seen our collection rates from them over the years increase from like five or seven percent and we're up to 12 or 13 percent now and that is just because we are doing a better job our due diligence of collecting information getting it to Comstar on time and then they're picking up the ball from there and reaching out and trying to figure out what their new address is and stuff like that. So when you total all that together, our collection rate all together is in like the 80s percent, and we're the envy of many communities for having such a high um, percentage. Great. In that and and how, how hard do they go after the non-pays? I mean, yeah. you know, some people just don't have the money. You're no. not going to get any money. You don't keep bugging them for months, do you? So right now, Comstar, what happens is they make sure they have all the correct information. If they're missing information, they come back to us and, and we actually amend <clears> reports. And then they will send three bills. They will, bill, they will keep working with the insurance companies and in any balance, they send three bills to the person. Right now, as of today, nothing happens from there. The Board of Oversight recently approved a collections policy and it's supposed to be an objective way of deciding who then would we send to a collections agency or report them to um, the credit reporting bureaus? And that was done because 
we don't want to be punitive. We want people to call 911. So we wanted an objective way of deciding, you know, really how do we, how do we get without a lot of false positives the people who are just choosing not to pay right. when they could afford right. it. Right. And the next step is to um, send those people either to collections or a, a credit bureau reporting agency um, based on that. But we, our policy is such that anybody who has any concern that they can't afford it in whole or in part or anything that we are appreciative of that and we respect that and we honor that we're we're not we're not in the jobs of you know right punishing somebody for needing help right um it's really just that that small percentage of people who just are like no oh, come and get it you know like <laughs> i'm good for it but i just don't want to that you know like okay how do we how do we see some of that money um but you know, I don't think there's there's not a lot of there's not a lot of money left there, um, but that is that would be the next step in our process. The, ex expanding up on that, and I, I know where you're going with it, Bruce, because there's there's some lost leader associated with providing a service because it's simply a service, it, and it's an, in this case here an intermunicipal service. It was never designed to be a profit center, right. and you know that part of the assessment of the cities and towns underwrites those uncollectibles. Yes. That's just the reality of it. Yeah, it's I, an intermunicipal yes. service. Just like a fire department gets yep. some fees right. back for permits or the police department for right. tag sales. Right. Um, anybody who says that like an ambulance will fund itself or support itself, mm. I, it makes me sick to my stomach. Usually those arguments are had when a fire department that already has personnel and operating budget right. want to add staff to then at like provide ambulance service and usually when you're looking at adding you know a handful of people two or three firefighter EMT firefighter mm -hmm. paramedics that's where the argument of the ambulance will pay for itself sure. supplements right. the fire yeah, and it's, the exactly um, so right I mean, we will but you're not adding a 1.3 million dollar paramedic level 24 hour seven service no. for a population center of 16,000 right. and expecting it to make money right yes it's no, not going to yeah, no, it I, just no, doesn't we happen never. Right. We, will, we will always, and I, I live in Deerfield, I pay right. into this, right. um, we will always subsidize this service as a, as a public right. service. We will always subsidize it. To, to Bruce's larger point, though, an area of concern looking forward budgeting could, see, could be seeing percentage declines in reimbursements. Yes. That comes back to the cities and towns. Yes. And, and that's an area of, of real focus looking forward. Yes, and um, in particular on, on the largest of the of the contributors, you know, you're never going to get that five percent, right? Whatever right. it is, pick um, Comstar, the the agency that we use for medical billing. Um, I have a very close working relationship with our representative, and they have certain flags. Mm -hmm. And so, if if they they watch legislation, rumor yeah, mills, things like sense. that, yeah. they will let us know ahead of time if they see something coming down the pike or whether we need to get ahead of something and write our you know, representatives. And then they also have flags if all of a sudden the data that they get coming in from our end is poor and they, they can't make those connections okay. anymore, yep. um, they will let us know ahead of time immediately. They'll send up a flag. Um, yeah. Do they do projections so like as our population is aging, more will be on Medicare? Um, and with the lower reimbursement rate, I imagine. I haven't seen one, but I will ask. Okay. Yeah, it's a great question. Mm -hmm. That's you, good. You could yeah. pick that out of out of the metadata. Like, oh well, wait a minute, we just right. start seeing this right. If happen. We, if we know what our like right age. <laughs> yeah, there's more people going to the Medicare. Towns, we could, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah, so I, there's part part of that like pr at least warning like reactionary stuff. Um, we do have that, and I actually asked about that recently, and our representative was like, you have nothing to worry about. Like, <laughs> you're, you're giving us great data, everything is great on our end, but we will let you know. It's the last happens. thing you want to hear from your retirement person. You have nothing to worry about. Yeah, nothing to worry about. And it's like, that's the first time line of questioning. It's like, okay, what aren't you telling me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I was you, but exactly. I'm not. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> great, thank you. All right. Any other questions? Just out of curiosity, uh, how much of the uh, medical expenses, how much uh, are we assessed in Narcan? And like how much is, has your response to like opiate related yeah. incidents gone up? 
gone down? Is it around we, flat? Yeah, we saw a major spike a few years ago, um, really where people started paying attention to this. And then there was a huge push, um, Tapestry, wonderful, Hampshire Hope. There's a lot of organizations that are working on um, helping those with substance use disorders and that we push to make Narcan available for free. And um, making Narcan available for free, education, uh, rehabilitation, and then harm reduction is the big thing that we're doing as well, which is acknowledging and meeting people where they are that you know, if you're going to use, here's how you use safely. Right. And it's, it's through those programs we've actually seen a drop off on our end about responding to those critical emergencies, mm -hmm. those cardiac arrests as a result right. of opiates mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, because they're, they're getting the help or they're using more safely or they're using with people that have access to Narcan. So. And that's reflective of what you're seeing across the county. Yes. And across Western Mass in general. Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah. Good. Thanks. Great question, Elliot. Right. Thank you. Zach, thanks for all you do. Appreciate it. Always a pleasure. We're easy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Sunderland? Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> Zach. <laughs> all right. Uh, next up, we have our minutes from I was say April, February 4th. We're all set. When is this meeting? Yep. This is. Uh, the 27th. This uh, yeah, minutes was like for the highway department budget review yes, and capital requests, ones. and then we were updated from the uh, fire chief that the uh, six thousand dollars appropriated at special town meeting was not going to be needed for the physicals. Uh, beyond that, there were some other updates. What was, what was Why all of a sudden we needed them? Then all of a sudden we don't need them. Yeah, it's. A, you want to take a crack at that? Yeah, no, it was yeah. a matter of clarification. I think there was some miscommunication, and they finally were able to clarify that existing staff don't need to have new. Correct. It's new staff coming in that right. will need these new level of physicals. Right. So, yes. and, and that's really what it was. Because when I when I looked through the law that he referenced in that and everything, mm -hmm. yeah, it had a lot to do with whether they wear respirators or not. Mm -hmm. That's and part it, of that. Yeah. And the regulations were. You know, more geared towards people that have respirators right. that they wear yeah. than anything else. And and the one concern that I have is is in that it also said that you're disqualified from a respirator mm -hmm. if you have facial hair. Bingo. How you use it? How it's and, worn? And I want to know about our fire department whether you know how that affects our fire department with people who have facial hair. Yep. Yeah. So if I could, Mr. Chair Bruce, when we when we spoke with the folks at the Department of Public Safety. They adopted, of course, the OSHA standard now, mm -hmm. and the enforcement of the said standard was um, set to be imposed on the first of February, and the and that's question enforced by the state, by the not state, by the federal, not OSHA. by the feds, right? So right. the question was inside of that OSHA standard, which makes some sense if it's a if it's a consensus standard and people adopt it. Well, if it's the best one, fine. Right. Right. The question was. What do we have to do about existing staff? Well, the pushback from Chiefs Association as well as uh, the, the larger agencies was, well, we have those fit and physical tests already for existing staff. Are you suggesting that we have to go through this process for everybody who's currently enrolled? And it took some time for that to okay. make okay. make its way through the, the sifter. Clarifying. And it finally came out with the Chiefs Association as well as Department of Public Safety saying, no, not for existing, if your records are current for fit test for physical ability and a demonstrated ability over the course of the prior 12, I think it's 12 months, and the chief, if you're watching, correct me, mm -hmm. I think it's the prior 12 months. That point there, this was dropped. The chief's point in bringing it to us was, well, if, 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 if we get dinged, you know, that's that's expensive too. Let's be out front and, and endorse it. So that's what's going on. So in this case here, we don't have any uh, new staff will, and the chief was really clear about the line in the, in the current budget going forward, new staff, you'll have to go through this. It's a tough part about an on-call, slightly compensated versus fully professional, they're trying to adopt one standard. And I appreciate the fact they're actually doing it. So that, this will come back up at the annual, because it came from stabilization, I assume. Right. It's gotta be back. put back. I, I think 
you know, down the road we have to do something about the local fire department. Yeah. And 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 you know, this is working out very well. It costs us a little bit more, but we get a much better sure. service. Regional service though. And and I think that's the way we have to go. I mean, we're spending a lot of money yep. on a lot of things for the yep. fire department. Yep. That, we already yeah. started talking about it like a little while back. We yep. were, and I, I think they Boston really have well. to start looking at that more than just talking about right. it. So it's interesting, you know, when if you go back now five years, essentially probably more closer to 10 when this EMS service was beginning this dialogue, it was the EMS directors are saying, well, we have a certain amount of assets allocated across a certain geographic area with a certain population. How do we ensure that it's it's even across that area and that study that came out was pretty clear so you can get seven minutes if you want to right. combine your resources right. but the the institution has to look like this right and i hear what you're saying about fire systems does everybody need that number of yeah. rolling equipment that exactly. available stock what does it look mm -hmm. like and that may be the next piece that's worth really exploring on a regional format, even if regional means multi towns. It's yeah, it's yeah, disposition yeah, yeah, of assets. That's something you can make the same it. argument for any first responder yeah. services like right. that. Really, yeah. Where yeah. does it have to go? But I have to to say I, I think you're severely underestimating the civic pride that is generated. Oh yeah, oh, there's, there's yeah. a lot of that. No, oh, yeah. no, no, there's a lot you of got that. It. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We, we even saw that back when the ambulance was all volunteer and, and everything. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. it was pushed back about going to a paid service, yeah. but it, you can it, see it how evolved, well it's so it had to go to a paid right. service. Right. Right. And and I mean, there is this civic pride and everything, but sure. I mean, you, you're dealing with a, a, a first response type of thing, and, right. and you know. If, if Pride's not going to stop your house from burning down. That's yeah, it. Right. That's it. Right. That's it. Right. That's it. Pride's, someone gets Pride's going to get those people like there that, who actually you know. help it. Right. Yeah. Good point. And it's sort of in my personal philosophy, the whole thing, just focus on the service. Right. Yeah, it's Forget what you're all do. the stuff yep. that's around it and the history and everything. Like we need to set sure. up a good, yeah. valuable service and focus on making that efficient. Good point. But Dre Bruce, an area, an area of focus as the next step. <clears throat> no doubt about that. Thank you. For that it is important. Oh, yeah. uh, move to accept the minutes as presented. All, right. uh, all those in favor? Thank you so much. Um, I actually, I'll second first. Yeah. Aye. <laughs> so, all right. Two to zip on that. Um, Board of Selectmen updates. Uh, there is a tentatively scheduled capital planning committee meeting tomorrow night here, 6 p.m prior to the planning board. We'll play that by the weather. Sherry, I want to thank her for uh, collating all the capital requests that have come in, and uh, we'll begin scaling that up against the available uh, resources. Also, on the 30th of, I'm pretty sure it's the 30th and not the 27th. But anyway, th there's a, a meeting for the Frontier uh, Unit A and Unit C negotiations mm -hmm on either the 27th or 30th. I think it's the 30th. It, it's our second to last scheduled meeting. So okay. we hope to bring forward uh, some um, something concrete for this for the towns before the budget season gets too far along. And I would again characterize these as um, uh, collaborative. They're not, they're not combative. Yep, that's good. <clears throat> yeah, along those lines, I have one uh, Wednesday. Um, we already had our first one with the IAs. I believe we'll have both teachers and IAs oh, good. Wednesday. So that'll be the first one that we get with them. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then we've got some meetings scheduled out into March, early okay. March. That so. makes sense. Um, and this is Union 38. Yes, correct. Yeah. Um, and then, let's see, I believe the 19th is what we're looking at now, Sherry, for it yes. looks like that's mm -hmm. going to be our first. Hold on to your hats, folks. Ditch committee meeting. That's, Riveting. It is Thursday, <laughs> excuse me, Tuesday, the 19th of February at 6 o'clock. Um, maybe this room or maybe out in the middle, all depends on whatever space is available, but okay. somewhere in here. And then on the 26th of February at, I think also, yep, also 6 o'clock, we have our first meeting with the Collins Center for the Personnel Committee meeting oh, in that study. So nice. looking forward to seeing what comes out of that. So. Uh, <clears throat> so that'll be good. Our caucus is the 25th, next Monday? No. Uh, no. It's 
March. 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 Okay. Yeah. We read. The, we read. I, just want, I wanted to rewarn the public, yes, and now I'm right. now I'm scaring them. So for <laughs> that, I apologize. <laughs> Let's see. It's uh, March fourth. Is it March fourth? It is. Yes, March fourth. So we'll be starting that at six thirty. Here will be the caucus. Actually, not the select board meeting. We'll start a little later. Yeah. Right. So usually it takes. I would say we usually wrap up in a half an half hour. Half an hour or so. Yeah. Right. So. Um, so that'll be that'll be an exciting rowdy time. So come on down and caucus. That's really exactly good. Right. Um, okay, and then he, uh, what the exciting <coughs> updates from the Excuse town me. administrator end of the desk there. All right. Uh, so the aggregation meeting scheduled for the um, for tomorrow at the cog has been canceled and rescheduled to February twenty first at six o'clock. Hmm. Um, I did hear from John Morgan today on the resubmission of the 25% design, yep. and they expect to submit that to DOT on Friday. Yep. So we'll okay. be getting those plans. So when, if I could, Mr. Chair, yeah. when do we... So we submit the 25%, we go to DOT, at... What's their historic response time to know um, acceptable, not acceptable? And right. more importantly, when do we know where we fall in the tip? Because we're... We're, we're on, still we're, on for 2020 for the tip. I was at... Okay, yeah. that's good. Tough. Yeah, Maureen right. brought it up at the... Um, I was at a mass emotion meeting last week. Got it. So oh, okay. we're still on schedule for okay. that. That'll be here it, before you know it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's 2019. <laughs> exactly right. right so. um, and John said we'd probably be having our public hearing in the spring. Okay, okay. that's what I would... Yeah, the next step. So that's Wonderful. what we'll be waiting on next. Yeah. Excellent. Busy Thank spring you. here in Sunday. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Sherry. Mm. All right. And oddly enough, that's all we have on our agenda for the evening. Um, and one important thing is our next meeting will not be next week due to the President's Day holiday and what? vacation week coming up. I know. So our next meeting will be Monday, February 25th. So um, this, for a lot of people, will be a long weekend. So enjoy that long weekend. And we are supposed to have some inclement weather tomorrow, um, a nice mixed bag of snow and sleet and other things like that. So I know um, it's been a tough year on the road so far, especially with these wild gyrations and temperatures. Mm. So, Good point. Um, so drive carefully out there. Make sure you keep your storm drains clear and your fire hydrants clear. Right. Those are important things. Um, I think we have any other important dates or events that uh, we can remember? That's it. All right. Um, Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, FCAT. Okay.